नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन 18 इन आवर कोर्स ऑन वर्क सिस्टम डिज़ाइन एंड करंटली वी आर इन द फोर्थ वीक ऑफ आवर डिस्कशन एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव सीन द वेरियस स्टेप्स इन्वॉल्व इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ मैथड स्टडी just to have a brief glimpse of what we have been discussing just to have a brief overview of how our course is flowing about in the very first two weeks we had discussion on productivity which laid a foundation that why do we need to study the work why do we need to analyze the way we are doing the work why do we need to find out the time that we are taking for for doing a particular work using a particular method so we have seen that the productivity is dependent upon the sequence of operations that we adopt it is dependent upon the time that we spend in completing that task it is also dependent upon the worker who is doing that task or the number of workers who are doing a particular task so therefore if we want to improve our productivity we have seen that what are the various productivity improvement strategies or techniques what are the areas where we must focus in order to improve our productivity and it was concluded that if we are able to focus on the way we are doing our work we can certainly improve our productivity and for that reason only we are now studying method study and we are currently in the fourth week of our discussion the third week was dedicated towards the basic concepts of work study the work content determination how excess work content is added to the basic work content what are the reasons there of how those reasons can be addressed what can be the remedies so all that was discussed during the work study also we have seen that when we are conducting a work how man can be used as a productive element vis a vis how a machine can be used as a productive element so with all that discussion now we are currently trying to understand that how to conduct the method study in a more systematic manner what is the need of studying method study that we have already understood in this week already we have two sessions the first session was based on the basic concept of method study the definitions in which we concluded that we have to find out one best way which is economical which is safe which is less tiresome for the workers workers enjoy doing the job following that standard method so we have to find out that standard method which is efficient effective as well as productive how we can find that there is a systematic technique and we have seen in the second session the various steps involved in that systematic technique that we are calling here as method study so now in today's session we will try to understand that how method study can be conducted so we have already seen the various steps involved now we will see that how we can record the information how we can keep whatever is happening on our piece of paper or how we can try to depict what is happening or the sequence of operations what are being followed or which are being followed to complete the work at hand we will try to put them on a piece of paper how by using a specific approach it can be through some charts it can be through some diagrams so what are the charts diagrams that are used for record for re systematically recording the way the work is currently being done is called recording of the facts and how it is done we will try to see just have a overview or a glimpse of the various types of diagrams or charts how they will look like then in our subsequent weeks we will focus on each one of these and we'll try to understand that how a problem is solved basically if a work is being done if you remember in one of our previous sessions i have taken an example of investment casting process so all the diagrams were shown that where the wax is being put into the mold is drawn out from the mold how a ceramic coating is put on the wax pattern so all those were shown with di uh, diagrammatically but here we have certain symbols which we use to depict the operations 
we start, use these symbols to depict the transportation, we use these symbols to depict the inspection. So, all those symbols combined together will make a chart and that chart then we will try to analyze, we will see where the things can be combined together, where a particular operation is redundant can be eliminated. So, it will help us in order to properly depict the actual work that is being done on the shop floor. So, whatever being is being done on the shop floor, we will try to understand it, assimilate it and then try to draw a diagram using a standard approach, standard symbols and then look at the chart and try to understand, try to analyze that how better we can do this work. So, what can be the standard approach? We have seen in the previous session that first we need to go look at the various possibilities where we can conduct the method study. Few guidelines were given. We have seen the Pareto's example, Pareto's technique also in the last session. So, we will try to identify that which work can be analyzed, where we will be benefited the work which will give us some benefits in terms of money or in terms of employees morale and motivation or in terms of time saving. So, we will try to find out that work where if we put the concepts of work study, method study, we will be able to derive some benefits. So, first part is selection. So, suppose we have now selected one particular work on which we want to apply the method study. The second step if you remember is recording. So, we will try to record all the facts and figures related to that work. So, basically our prime motive here is that we will try to put what is the current way of doing the work on a paper in the form of a chart. So, chart can be different types that we will see, but first in the broader sense, we must try to understand that what we are planning to do or what we are trying to do. We are trying to first find out that what work we want to analyze, which work element is our focus area. After identifying that we are going to focus, for example, there is a workshop, we want to focus primarily on the foundry section only. So, we will then see that foundry section is our work domain. We are not going to go to the carpentry or we are not going to go to the inspection or we are not going to go to the machining. We are going to go only into the foundry shop and apply the principles of method study. So, we have selected one work area, second is we will try to record. Now, in recording we will see how the raw material is entering, where it is going first, where it is getting melted, how it is transported from the furnace to the mold what is the mechanism of transportation, whether it is a automatic mechanism or it is a manual mechanism. Then we will see how the material is being poured into the mold, whether it is a gravity feeding system or there can be an improvised feeding system also, how much time we are giving for cooling the mold cavity, how we are trying to take out the solidified product or the solidified part from the mold, whether we are breaking the mold, what is the technique we are following to, bre to break the mold. So, all this we will try to analyze and when we analyze this, we have to record this and when we record this, we have to use certain symbols which can be called as the language of engineers. We need to find out some standard symbol. Suppose, I am working for the company, if I draw a process chart any other engineer who joins after me must be able to understand just by looking at the process chart that what is the sequence of operations being followed in the industry. So, maybe the whole uh, operations of the company or the whole sequence of operations of the company can be easily depicted on a A4 size sheet with the help of these symbols. And what are these symbols that we will try to understand today? So, the most important part what I believe is that we must know that what we are going to learn and then we can use our mental faculties to understand that yes, this is the thing which was discussed in the beginning of the session and this is what is the actual thing all about. So, basically for in our different steps, today our focus is primarily on the second step that is the recording techniques. Also must I tell you that we will now be focusing on the recording techniques one by one in our subsequent sections or subsequent discussion. 
when we discuss a technique we will do the complete method study based on that technique we will take an example for example if we talk of operation process chart we will see this was the problem that was identified that is selection this is the way the operation process chart was uh, was uh, made or was drawn then this many number of operations are there this many number of transportations are there this many number of inspections are there this many number of delays are there so we will plot it we will draw it then the next stage is what we have to examine and develop a better method we have to look at the various alternatives then we will say this is the current way of doing the work these were the possible alternatives available after maybe discussion among the employees and after discussion after examining all these alternatives we developed this method which is the better method as compared to the current method so once the better method is developed we have to define it install it and then maintain it so for different techniques we will see the first four five steps which are common to all method study uh, techniques or whatever not the techniques i must call all the method study recording techniques for example operation process chart we draw the first thing will be you have to identify the work area where you want to apply the method study then you have to record it using the operation process chart the next thing is you have to see examine the what is the current way of doing the work by looking at the number of operations number of inspections then using your mental faculties creativity innovation you can use any word you have to list out the alternatives possible then based on that alternatives you will select one best alternative then you have to define the best way or the best standard method of doing the job then you have to install it and finally maintain it in the company so this is the sequence of steps that are followed in method study for each of these charts we will try to see one or two problems related to different types of recording techniques so today our very brief discussion is just an overview or an outline of the recording techniques so first we must know that why we are recording the data because this will help us to systematically compare the current method of doing the job and the developed method of doing the job so how the developed method is better than the current method we will be able to find out how we will be able to find out suppose in the current method of doing the job we are having five operations three inspections and in the new method suppose we have two operations and one inspection only so we will say that the number of operations have been clubbed together the technology has been developed so that the five operations can now be done in two operations only also the inspection task has reduced so the new method takes less time it is less time consuming less labor effort is required so the new method is better that is only possible if we have systematically recorded the current method of doing the work and then systematically in a tabular form we can compare the two methods for for our conclude concluding remarks or for drawing logical conclusions of the method study so we will see that what are the various recording techniques so on your screen you can see just uh, whatever i have already explained is now put into words so i will read after selection so already i have highlighted recording is the second stage so first stage of first method is selection so first we have to select the work that we want to analyze using method study after selection of a potential job the area where want we want to apply the principles of method study next step is to record all the facts so this is our second steps or uh, second step of method study success of method study depends on the accuracy and correctness of the events related to the job as they form basis for critical examination and development of the new method already i have highlighted all facts figure data information related to the current method of doing the job must be logically scientifically 
established and examined so for examination it is it is seriously required that whatever data is related to the job that is depicted properly that is documented properly or in other words i must say that must be recorded properly if you do not record the all the information properly then at a later stage we may not be able to develop the better method because the better method is dependent upon the exact representation of the current method of doing the job so if we are not recording the current method accurately automatically the better method that we are trying to develop when it is based on a inaccurate information non precise information the best method or the better method will also not be accurate so it is always important and the best method depends on the accuracy and correctness of events related to job as they form basis for critical examination so we cannot be lax we cannot be careless in recording the information we cannot leave out certain important facts related to the current method of doing the job so recording these techniques help in recording the events precisely in the standard form we will try to see some of the standard forms today which can be easily understood by all method study analyst all over the world so basically we can say that it is a standard practice of depicting the way the work is being done and anywhere in the country or across the globe everybody follow the same system so you can have a standard method of representing or recording the facts and figures related to the work being done or the sequence of operations involved in the work being done so recording must be this is very important again i am highlighting accurate clear and concise and understandable so when you are recording all inform must be uh, information must be accurate it must be it must be clear and concise as well as understandable now this is uh, important because we will be using these symbols quite often in our discussion on method study so these are standard symbols as it is given asme has recommended five standard method study symbols so all these symbols you can see the first one is operation for example you are doing a drilling in a steel plate so it will depict an operation or you are cutting a keyway or maybe uh, you can say that you are pouring the molten metal into the mold cavity so all examples are related to mechanical engineering since i am a mechanical engineer so all wherever the work is being done any operation is being done we will say that it is it can be represented by a circle inspection is usually represented by a square so you can see different examples of inspection so inspection can be when you are weighing for example a company is manufacturing 1 kg tin tinned uh, packages of ghee so once the package after packaging the packet is coming or the tin is coming you weigh it on the weighing scale and record the value whether it is 1 kg or 1.01 kg so that is basically the inspection that you are doing or if you are making the cricket bats the weight of the bat you want to control so for every cricket bat being manufactured you can weigh it so that will represent the inspection operation inspection then the transportation in transportation what is done a material is being moved from one place to another place so it can be depicted by the symbol on your screen very very self explanatory symbol then delay which is a temporary storage for example a worker has completed his task he is just waiting for the supervisor to issue the next instructions to him so that is that will cause a delay or there is a work in process which has piled up before the machine because the machine has broken down so that can also depict delay can be depicted in our process chart using this symbol the kind of a d symbol you can see and then the last is the storage inverted triangle so this is for permanent storage for example the inventory or the material is stored in the warehouse or a store so that will represent storage so wherever material is permanently stored that uh, can be depicted by a inverted triangle so quite often you will see all these symbols being used for representing the work or the current method of doing the work 
and then when you develop a new method also you may be using the same symbols you now some of you may be wondering that if two or three activities are being done simultaneously how to depict that so for that also there are combined activity symbols a combined activity occurs when two activities occur simultaneously in such situation the symbols for two activities are combined the example you can see the circle within the square represents the combined now circle represents operation and the square represents inspection so now the two may be activities of operation and inspection are depicted by a single symbol only so we can have this type of symbols which can depict two different activities so these are the symbols uh, sorry we will see in our subsequent slides that how these symbols are combined together to make a recording technique or a recording process in the form of a process chart or a diagram so quickly we can see this is the classification of the recording techniques used in method study so there can be chart based in chart based we can see here there are number of techniques outline process chart we will see how a outline process chart looks like in today's session then there is a flow process chart and in flow process chart it is of three types one is man type material type and machine type flow process chart and finally the two handed process chart so we have three types of charts or charts based on sequence so these are outline process chart man type uh, sorry flow process chart and two handed process chart similarly there are charts that are based on time scale which are multi activity charts and the simultaneous motion cycle chart simo charts so we will see what is a simo chart also then the diagrams based on movements we can see flow diagram string diagram cycle graph chrono cycle graph travel chart so you can see that there can be depending upon the type of work being done we can choose depending upon the level at which the work is being done may for example we need to have a birds eye view of the whole organization that how the work is being done so we may we may go for a outline process chart we can just focus on the maybe broader activities that are being done in the organization so we can see an outline process chart for example we want to focus on two operators operating two machines so we are now focusing on a particular area of the work domain so we will use a different type of chart which can be a multi activity chart so depending upon the requirement we will choose among these for example somewhere time is very important we want to optimize the time used for or time required for uh, completing a particular task in that case we may focus on charts charts based on time scale because we want to have a time as our reference method a reference criteria for comparing the two different methods for example there is a current way in which the work is being done but we feel that it is taking lot of time so we want to develop a better method which is less time consuming so there we need to compare the two methods based on the time scale so in that case which what will help us the charts based on time scale will be helpful to us so depending upon the requirement we will choose which type of process chart or which type of recording technique we must use in charts based on sequence of operations being done we still have three options we have outline process chart we have flow process chart and we have two handed process chart so based on sequence based on time we have multi activity and simo charts based on the movement we have flow diagram string diagram cycle graph chrono cycle graph so this is based on different application areas so quickly let us see one by one what are process charts a process chart is a graphic means of representing the activity that activities that occur during manufacturing as i have already told that it is a overall picture or birds eye view of what is happening in the industry most popular method of recording the facts the activities comprising the jobs are recorded using the method study symbols you know what are the method study symbol just now we have completed a circle a square a inverted triangle transportation symbol an arrow 
so all these symbols are used to depict so let us quickly see on your screen you can see outline process chart of plywood manufacturing so you can see different types of symbols are there there is a circle here and there is a combined symbol here you can see as we have discussed so there will be uh, operations that are happening then there can be inspection at some places so we can see here there is i cannot see any delay here so there is another uh, inspection happening here clearly it is depicted it is an inspection so gluing is a example of operation so you can see that you can you can have different uh, operations but the symbol remains a circle only then different stages inspection is being done but the symbol is a square only and in case of operation i have told the symbol will be circle only now this is another way of representing outline process chart so we have three roots here and you can see here if you if you can see cut so cutting represents an operation and therefore depicted by a circle and then the, if you can see square will represent a inspection so we can uh, easily see that two symbols are only used here the the operations are being done and then inspection is being carried out now this is the flow process chart the second type of chart which can and all these symbols are here you have a circle here a transportation this is representing transportation this is representing delay this is representing storage and then there is a inspection symbol also so you have all the process chart symbols here also but what is the difference in process chart outline process chart also you have seen that in our, we have used all the symbols and we have depicted the process that what are what is the sequence if you remember this flow process chart and outline process chart are based or the charts based on sequence of operation so we have we have been able to depict the sequence in case of outline process chart but here you see there is another key element which is depicted here which is time so time is also taken into account then there is another thing which is here which is distance the distance traveled may be for completing the activity so this is basically a flow process chart in which we can see the summary is also possible so we have event is operation depicted by a circle then transportation depicted by arrow delay inspection and storage so if we see this is we, here we will write the number present maybe in the present method you have 12 operations but in the proposed method you have two operations only and then we can compare the savings so this is a standard way of drawing a flow process chart and then this is one example you can see all the symbols are there operation symbol is there transportation symbol is there and it is written also inspection delay and storage and the distance travel is also given so we can have different types of flow process chart as you know it can be a man type or a material type or a machine type so this is one example of man type of flow process chart you can very clearly see time is mentioned distance is mentioned and you have to we will see when we come to man type process chart that we will try to understand it with a very simple problem so that you are able to draw it when i speak during the discussion you can easily draw it just by listening you can draw a chart and you can you can see that how it has to be drawn so here you can see there is a complete sequence which is being followed depending upon the description of the work so if you see first just i will read it for you to author's office so it is movement so we can say it is transportation take dictation so take dictation is operation so circle is taken into account and here we can see it is a present method so everything is recorded how many operations nine operations transportations four so the current method has been time also in minutes it can be calculated and distance in meters can be calculated is man type similarly this is another example of man type flow process chart this is worker type clearly mentioned here 
then there can be material type clearly mentioned here it is a material type uh, how the material is being moved then there is two handed process chart we can have a left hand what the left hand is doing what is the right hand doing so you can see pick screwdriver from the rack insert screw in the hole so right hand is inserting a screw in the hole and the left hand is going to pick up the screwdriver so this is two handed process chart then this is a multi activity chart we can see here we have operator a operator b and operator c so the process is being done operator a is doing the process is loading the machine and this is the machine so he is loading the machine then the machine is doing the process in this much time then unloading done by operator a again loading done by operator a again the process is being done on the machine and again unloading is being done so operator a basically is operating the machine then operator b is packing whatever is being produced so we can see operator b is packing once the process is completed the work has been unloaded again operator b is packing and then he is idle then operator c is storing so operator a is performing the task on a machine the machine is doing the process it is producing some product operator b is packing the product and operator c is storing the product so we can see we can calculate we can find out the optimal utilization of these three people and in many cases we can see whether all these three are really required can't we combine the packing and storing work so that only one operator is doing the packing and storing so very easily we save the labor effort required by operator c so such type of decisions can be taken if we systematically record all this information so when we record this information we can very easily calculate that in the maybe one hour duration how much time operator a was free how much time operator b was free and how much time operator c was free and then we can do the calculation and find out that whether we really require these three people or the work can be done by two labor only or two persons only then these are simo chart just a standard depiction of a simon simo chart simultaneous motion cycle chart here we can see wing counter reading left hand description and there will be right hand description also and there is a important term called thurblig that we use mostly in micro motion study and thurblig's are basically uh, these symbols which are which were developed by gilbreth and we have already discussed about the gilbreth when we studied the historical perspective of uh, method study or the work study so we will see what are the thurblig's what are the various symbols for thurblig's and why do we need to use thurblig's and how they can be used to draw the simo charts then coming on to the diagrams let's quickly see a diagram gives a pictorial view of the layout of workplace on which location of different equipment machine extra are indicated so we will uh, indicate the different equipment machines where we will we will give a pictorial view of the layout so the movement of subject now what is the subject here subject can be man or it can be a material is then indicated on the diagram by a line or a string so it will give us a pictorial view for example there is a hospital so if we have a birds eye view of the hospital we can see what are the various wards what are the various functional areas within the hospital and how a movement is done for example a work a, a patient goes to a ophthalmologist or i hospital so how he has to move in the various sections of the i hospital that can be very easily depicted with the help of a string diagram today we are just having a overview we will see each one of these in much more detail in the coming weeks the first slide was not that clear but this clears everything so this is a flow diagram it is a flow diagram of manufacture of bicycle paddle axle bicycle paddle axle so what are the operations being done are clearly indicated raw material store raw material store then there is a heat treatment section machine shop milling assembly section so how the material the blue line is depicting the movement of the material so this flow diagram is giving a birds eye view of the 
bicycle pedal axle section or the shop or the workshop and how the material is moving from one section to another section that is being depicted. Similarly, this is a string diagram the blue line is only depicting the movement that how the work will move in case of this type of a uh, work layout. So, you have a band saw machine here, there is a vertical drilling machine here, there is a lathe, there is a router. So, you have how the material will move in this uh, carpentry shop that can be very easily seen. So, this can be one workshop, we cannot focus only on carpentry because of the band saw, because here we have lathe machine also and vertical drill. So, in this workshop, how the material will move can be easily <coughs> depicted using this blue line, which is a string diagram. Very easily, we can measure the length of the string and try to find out that if we improvise on the sequence or if we pro propose a better method whether we are able to reduce the length of the string or not. This is a cycle graph you can see a light bulb is here it is depicted here. So, this is a how the cycle graph will look like when a person is writing or drawing something how what is the movement micro movement of the hand that can be very easily found out here. This is a chrono cycle graph you can see here this dotted line represent the flickering of the light and the depicting the movement of the various limbs if it is connected to hand it can depict the movement of the hand because this has to be done in a slightly dark room because the camera captures the blinking of the bulb or the bulb being fitted on the hand to see how the movement is being done. So, this is a chrono cycle graph you can see here this is the direction of motion and this is the blinking symbols how the movement is being done. Finally, this is a travel chart you can just focus here on two things from to. So, how the material is moving from which section to which section and this is specific example is for the uh, based on the weight kilogram per day. So, this is uh, just an example that how much kilogram of material is moving from one section to the other section in a given day. So, this type of chart can also help us to see and optimize on the layout of the workshop and find out to minimize the travel because if the travel is there it will take time it will take effort. So, we can focus on analyzing that what is the movement of the material among the various sections and how we can optimally utilize the space available with us in order to improvise this type of movement or in order to optimize this type of movement. So, with this we conclude the today's session with just two lines that we have lots and lots of recording techniques available with us. We can apply them based upon the type, the way and the time that we are spending on doing the work. So, based on the specific application we will choose a specific recording technique. And to close in our next discussion whatever discussion we will have in the next three weeks on method study our focus primarily will be to understand each one of these techniques with specific examples and case studies. Thank you.